Lately I've been preparing for some demonstrations I'm doing in Colorado next week on thread chasing. One of the things I like to do is invent some aids for teaching, whatever I'm teaching, in this case thread chasing. So this video is going to cover some of those things that explain different procedures in chasing threads by hand. The first thing I'm going to do in this video is cover traversing with the uh, thread chaser. What that simply means is the speed at which you move your thread chaser past the wood. Okay, now eventually I'm going to have threads established on there and those threads are going to dictate the movement of my thread chaser. To begin with, I have a chamfer on this cylinder of wood. I've got a 12 TPI chaser that I'm going to just practice with. And I'm going to just establish some threads. Go down to around 300 RPM. Okay, now I've established a little bit of a groove on the beginning of this chamfer here. Okay, and with a coarse thread chaser like a 12 TPI chaser, it's a little bit more difficult to get going. Okay, now I've got some threads established and I'm going to turn the corner. Now the thread chaser is starting to move by itself. I'm not pulling it or pushing it. That groove is dictating how fast the traverse is on this chasing operation right now. Now, if you have a 20 TPI chaser, you go slower than if you do with a coarser thread chaser. Let me demonstrate that. Okay, you're looking at the first teaching aid that I made to demonstrate the traverse of your thread chaser and how fast that should go. This thread over here was actually done with a Beal tap and die set for wood. It was just a dowel from the uh, lumber yard. This is some lignum vitae over here with a 16 TPI thread. This one on your right has about a 6 TPI thread, so it's a lot coarser than this. I'm going to turn my lathe on, and I've got a couple little uh, threaded rings on here. And this is going to show you how fast a coarse thread goes compared to a finer thread. Kind of like a race, and the coarse thread is going to win. Which means, if you're chasing with a very coarse thread chaser, your initial traverse has got to be a little faster. Okay, um, let's, let's continue this. Show it to you one more time in, in the other direction. So again, show it to you one more time and move on to the next teaching aid. So there's traversing with the thread chaser. Now the next thing I'm going to show you are some materials I use to practice. They're not very good necessarily for a finished product, but for practicing thread chasers, which can be expensive if you're using boxwood or lignum vitae, um, are some pretty good things that you can work with. Uh, I'm doing a full day class. In, in Denver, and it's at the Rockler store. Um, this is a candle, and maybe I'll take a candle over there and just show you how I do that. Um, very cheap, very easy to thread, and what that teaches is sensitivity. You know, if you have a real heavy hand, which a lot of us guys do sometimes when I just barrel in there, uh, it'll destroy something like this candle but it's a very good teaching aid. Some of the things you can practice with, uh, PVC pipe, okay? 
whatever fits into a chuck in your in your lathe can be threaded and I've just messed around a little bit with some of these different components of PVC piping um, this one here you can do you can chuck this up into a two inch jaw and you can do the outside and you can do the inside threads on that one piece um, this is some Corian and if you go to a cabinet shop that does countertops and such they'll probably give you some Corian the, the worst part about this is cutting it and the thing I found to cut Corian into a nice little circle is a hole saw that you might use to uh, put the lock set into a door. So I've got some little pieces of core in there and you can either do the internal or the external thread with that core in. This is simply an acrylic pen blank and I've made little projects out of this. It's not very thick but if you get the like 7 8 inch or as thick as you can get for a pen blank it takes a great thread and, and it's really nice to practice with. This is some Australian snake wood. It takes an excellent thread. These are just pen blanks. Okay, and you can practice with that. And at the end, you still have a pen blank left over that you can use. Uh, this is some Trex decking. Now, if you just buy a piece of Trex decking, it's very expensive. So, if you can get a, a little cutoff or something from your lumber yard, that's a good place to go. And we're going to do that in our classes turn some Trex decking which takes a very good thread it's just not very pretty. Um, here's, here is a, some epoxy that I cast and it takes an excellent thread. The problem with that is you might as well use some exotic wood because this can be very expensive if you want to make a project out of epoxy. Okay let's go over the lathe and we'll turn a candle. Now I'm over at my Delta MIDI lathe and I've got a piece of candle here a little section of candle but I've got a Morse taper turned on, all right? And you can do this with other projects like a bottle stopper or a top and just simply turn a Morse taper, put it up into your headstock, and I'm a little bit out of balance there, so I'm going to have to chew this up. And I may have to bring my tailstock up. I'm going to try to do this without. And I'm just taking a skew chisel Okay, that ain't gonna work. Okay, I had to bring my tailstock up, my tail center, because it was not working. And it's always a good idea if you're doing a demonstration or in a classroom situation to try what you're trying to teach, because that would have been kind of a disaster. So I'll recommend that we bring our tailstock up. I want to get that down to a nice even trued up cylinder. Now, if you start here by this live center, you might have a problem with your thread chaser. We don't want to hit that metal. So I'm gonna, I just made a little bit of a recess there. I'm gonna go down to about 250. This is on the smallest belt, so it's from 250 to 750. And let's see if we can chase a thread in wax. Now again, to begin with, you've got to uh, begin the traverse yourself, okay? Now I'm getting hung up right there on that little, little shoulder I just created, so, so there we go. We have a, a pretty good thread established, and it's following that thread all by itself. The chaser is doing its work. so. You do have to be a little bit careful and uh, not be too heavy handed on this. And you can just chase this away. And it's really kind of fun. Okay, so on to the next teaching aid. Now, the next topic or lesson I need to confront, sometimes in the form of a question, is do we want parallel sides on our male and female threads. This is just a block of walnut and I have absolutely parallel sides on what would be the male threads. And I've drilled a hole in here with a Forster bit so it's as uh, trued up and parallel sided as possible. Okay, and that has a nice slip fit. Okay, just kind of 
is held on there. If I keep turning this and make it a half a millimeter less diameter than it is right now, that's going to be loose. And if you do it in threads, the same thing is going to happen. Your threads may be loose. Now, this is a piece of honey locust, male spigot or tenon, and the female recess with a little bit of a taper on there. Now, let's say that is a perfect fit. I've threaded it and it fits in there perfectly. And another thing I need to talk about is this flat area abutting up against this shoulder. That's important and I'll talk about that in a second. Let's say our threads are loose. We've gone too far and our threads just don't fit and they, they're like stripped. Okay, now here's what you can do. Take a little bit off this flat area or this shoulder and your threads thread on a little bit more and because it's tapered, it'll make a tighter fit. I aim for parallel sides on my threads. Okay, both the male and the female parts usually they're a little bit tapered. Okay, but there are big time wood turners, thread chasers who advocate having a tapered thread. Um, now, the shoulder. I got a couple pieces of PVC pipe. Okay, this is a male threaded section and this is a female threaded area. And those thread on there very nicely. Now, how do you tighten black pipe, galvanized pipe, PVC pipe, there's no, no shoulder on there. They're designed to tighten simply against the threads. And you can torque on those with some monkey wrenches and get them really, really tight. Um, if you do that in wood, it may destroy the threads. Okay, so taking a look at this again, I'm threading that on there and my shoulder and this flat area connect and prevent the threads from going on any further. So that shoulder is very important. So if I have a gap in there and I threaded those together and that's my finished project, um, you can keep tightening those and maybe destroy the threads. So it's very important that that shoulder and that flat area need to connect and then you can't tighten your threads anymore and that will save them from being crumbled and destroyed. Now the last thing I want to talk about are some thread chasing tools. This is the female thread chaser and if you notice on... You can't see that? Hmm. Got an idea. Okay, that was kind of mean. So I'm talking about thread chasing tools. Here's a point tool and in my demonstrations I'm going to talk about how to sharpen this and maybe this is a little easier to see than something that big. So there's a point tool and there's my female thread chaser and I'll talk about sharpening and what you do to get that ready. Sometimes when these tools come out of the package they're not quite ready to use. So I'll talk about that in my demonstrations. And here's my male thread chaser. So now if you're teaching thread chasing or you're showing somebody else how to chase threads, use any of these ideas. They're probably not original anyway. So thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.